When it comes time to disassemble your telescope rig, you may find that some of the components have inexplicably fused themselves together. The question is, why does this happen, and how do we get them apart? Well, I've got some theories as to what is causing this, and we're going to run some experiments to get to the bottom of it. More importantly, I'm going to show you the tools you need to get those things apart, including the one tool you should use only as a last resort. And what does a Newton's cradle have to do with any of this? Stay tuned. So when I screw these together, you might think that I'm just screwing them together too tight, but that is not it, I assure you. I will often uh, just make them just snug enough that I don't have to worry about them coming undone and my stuff falling into the dirt or whatever. But when I come out in the next morning and try to take my stuff apart, they might as well be welded together. So what has changed? The only variable I can think of is the temperature. So you know that when things heat up or cool off that they will expand or contract, respectively. I think that's what's going on here. You attach them together when they are one temperature, then the temperature changes and that swelling or contraction takes place and it causes the threads to just interlock with extreme fervor. So how can we test this theory? I'm going to try screwing these together and tossing them in the freezer. See if we can get them to stick together. All right, these are fresh out of the freezer. Let's see if we can take them apart. It looks like all of these rings have come apart. So uh, that did not work. Maybe we need more gear. All right, I've got even more rings in different sizes. I've got some 42 millimeter, some 48 millimeter. I've got a camera rotator and a filter drawer. I'm just going to stick all this stuff together. Then we'll toss it in the freezer and we'll see if we get any results that way. So let's put all this together. All right, this is a little bit more typical of what I would have on an actual telescope rig. Usually I don't have just a couple of rings. I usually have a lot of stuff. So let's put this in the freezer and see what that does. All right, seriously though, I must really love you guys uh, to be doing this to my gear. So please hit the, the like button and subscribe. Let's do it. Here it goes. Come back in an hour. All right, for us out of the freezer again, let's see what this does. All of those came loose. That's loose. Oh, did we get, no, that's loose too. All of these are loose. I still think it's a temperature difference. Maybe the freezer is just cooling things off way, way faster than nature does. So maybe it's a, a gradual temperature decrease that's causing it. Let's take a bunch of rings and let's just stick them outside tonight and let nature do its thing. See if that gets us any results. All right, we've got our rings. They've been warmed up. I'm just gonna leave them right out here. We'll let nature cool them off this time. Nature did not disappoint. I've got two sets of rings, both in the uh, 48 and 42 millimeter sizes that have fused together. Uh, so I did exactly the same thing I did with the freezer. I just screwed them together, not too tight. And then I tried to take them apart and they don't come apart anymore. So I think that it has something to do with a gradual temperature decrease. So here's uh, what we can do. Since it is a temperature change that caused our problem, what we can do is we can try to make things the same temperature that they were when we originally put them together. Perhaps that will make the contraction and expansion go back to its original position and maybe they'll be easier to get apart. So let's try that and see if that helps. Oh, oh, look at that. I got these ones apart. So just by warming them back up to their original temperature, that seems to help. But I cannot get these ones apart. This happens to me on accident uh, more than a couple of times. And it seems to always be when I have this a little ring attached to a bigger ring. And so um, I think that might be part of the equation. I think that's a smaller ring um, with less matter in it is expanding and contracting at a slightly faster rate than something that has more matter in it. And so that might be a contributing factor. It might also be that the smaller ring is just plain harder to get your hands wrapped around because it's so tiny. So if you can't get a good grip on it, 
that will also prevent you from breaking apart. I think both of those are factors, but I think there's something else happening here as well. Here I have my camera attached to an off-axis guider. If you've never seen one of these before, what it is is it's, uh, it's, it's basically a, a guide scope, but instead of having a small telescope attached to your big telescope, um, the light that comes in from the telescope, a portion of that light gets redirected into your tracking camera like this. Well, this part that's hanging off to the side, that is like a handle that is allowing gravity to pull on it. And so if this is now attached to your, your telescope up here, that's not moving. And so if gravity is pulling this down, what is that doing? That is applying a torque to these tubes here, tightening them up. Couple that with a temperature change, you've got a recipe for fusion. Now you might have a telescope with a shorter focal length, so an off-axis guider is not really an issue for you. You're, you just use a regular guide scope. So that's fine, but consider this monstrosity. This is an electronic uh, filter wheel, and it is giant. This one will hold seven filters, so it is, is quite large. And look, the camera is not centered in the middle of this. And so what does that do? If it's in this orientation, that is going to apply that same torque that we were talking about before. So everything down line of this is now going to get twisted tighter. This is a Newton's cradle. Its purpose is to demonstrate the law of conservation of momentum. So what does this have to do with our telescope scenario? If I spin these outer rings, you can see that they move freely without moving this ring here. But if I spin them hard enough that they bottom out, they'll transfer that angular momentum into that ring and cause it to move too. So the idea here is that when you're screwing your parts together, when they bottom out, some of that energy is being transferred into the next ring in the line, which is causing it to turn and tighten a little bit more. And this is gonna happen all the way down the line just like it happens all the way down the line with our Newton's cradle. This can cause the first ring that you attach to be quite tight. This five millimeter ring is quite small. It doesn't have a lot of space to grab onto and that can make loosening it very difficult just because you can't get a good grip. So when I'm putting my telescope parts together, I always try to put the smallest ones on last. That way when they bottom out, they transfer their angular momentum to larger rings, which are easier to hold onto and therefore going to be easier to remove. So now that we understand a little bit more about what is causing this, perhaps we're in a better position to be able to prevent it from happening in the first place. But it's still going to happen. So when it does, here are some of the things that uh, I use to get them apart. This is called the strap wrench. You can get it from Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. And I found a, a two pack. It came with this little one and with this big one. So get yourself two. You need two of them. The way these work is they have this long rubber tail and you can push that through to make it larger or pull it the other way to make it smaller. What you want to do is put your ring in there and then tighten it down. Then you want to put the other one on the other side, tighten it down, and then you're just going to twist them apart. Now you're going to hold the wrench either in this direction or in this direction depending on how you want to twist. And the way you know which is which, is that when you are twisting, the, the ring is going to press against this foot here. So if you want to twist it in that direction, you have to hold it this way. If you want to twist it in the other direction, you have to turn it around so that when you twist it in the other direction, it presses against the foot over here. Part of the problem with this is that when you have a ring that is this small, that's not really a lot of material for the wrench's rubber part to grab onto. So one of the things I found that kind of helps me with that is if I take a larger ring and kind of twist that on on this side, then I'll get the rubber to span that gap between the two. Uh, and that helps me get a little bit of a stronger grip on it. So let's go ahead and see if we can use these to break this apart. I'm gonna want to turn this in that direction. So I need to make sure the foot is going in that direction. I'm gonna make sure that that rubber is on that small ring as well as the, the large one. I wanna grab them both at the same time. But I don't want the rubber to, to go over onto the other side. That's what this one's gonna do. So this, so this wrench is gonna to need to go in the opposite direction because I'm going to be 
twisting them in opposite directions. Look at that. I didn't even barely, it, it's already done. Look at that, I didn't even have to really torque down on it. So this thing works really, really well. Now I promised you a tool of last resort. There was one time where I could not get the strap wrenches to work. In that case, I used one of the strap wrenches just to kind of hold on to it. And with the other side, I used this. This is a special wrench for car oil filters. It has these big nasty looking teeth on it. Um, this will get your rings apart, <laughs> but it will probably damage them. This uh, one thing you could do is try put, putting a, a piece of cloth, maybe a towel or something in there. Um, but it did, it did kind of mar my ring a little bit, but it didn't damage it to the point where it's unusable. It just kind of scratched some of the uh, black paint off of it. But uh, this, this will work, but it will wreck your stuff. So be careful with it. If you found this information helpful, I hope that I have earned a subscription. Please consider leaving me a comment down below as well. I love interacting with you guys. And until next time, clear skies.